Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of Format Podcast Live. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So um, this week's been a crazy week in terms of uh, when I'm dropping shows and uh, when I'm giving you guys the content that I normally do. But, um, you know, things come up and then you got the holiday week and all this kind of stuff going on. And so um, I wasn't sure what my schedule is going to look like uh, later later today today is wednesday obviously day before thanksgiving so i wanted to make sure that i got on here and um gave you guys the content that you normally get from me <clears throat> excuse me on a wednesday so i said all right let me let me get in here early let me go ahead and uh deliver this and uh drop the show so that's exactly what i'm gonna do uh hopefully we get some people in here in the chat i know it's a, a very odd time totally different from when i normally do it but at least uh, for those who don't catch it live, you'll be able to see the replay, uh, you know, later today or if you want to watch it tomorrow or whenever that may be. So uh, at least I will have the opportunity to uh, to get this out to you guys. Again, don't know uh, what my schedule is going to look like later today, but I wanted to make sure that I got this content out to you. So we got some uh, we got some good stuff. I appreciate anybody who's uh, who's um, showing up here this morning. It's not that serious. What's good, bro? Haven't seen you in a while, man. Pleasure to see you back in the back in the chat. Um, but yeah, anyone who's uh, anyone who's uh, uh, checking in, I appreciate you. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate that. Helps the show grow. Helps the YouTube algorithm push it out to uh, more people who uh, may want to listen and uh, make sure you hit that share button as well. Share button is powerful. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to drop my little spiel and then we'll go ahead and get going. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm. Do whatever you got to do to remember Saturday nights at 7 p.m. We are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in. Talk to us. Get at me. I love it. I can't. Um, let's go ahead and get to this week 13 NFL pick em. I know you guys have been getting used to that on Wednesdays. And so uh, here I am to deliver it. So obviously we got a kind of different uh, NFL schedule this week. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving in advance to everybody. Um, hope you guys uh, celebrate a happy one, a safe one with your families and all that. Um, okay, cool. Uh, or friends. But anyway, uh, so we have normal, we have three Thanksgiving games. And obviously we have the, the two mainstays on Thanksgiving, the Dallas Cowboys and the Detroit Lions. And then we have a third game. So first game. Is going to be uh, Chicago Bears at Detroit Lions. Now, the Bears, in fairness, have been playing better since the removal of uh, Shane Waldron as OC. That's generally something that happens, but uh, they're about to run into the buzzsaw. And I, for the life of me, I cannot see uh, Chicago winning this game. This is a pretty easy one. Uh, I talked about it um, on the on the show yesterday, the wrap up. I love the way Detroit can beat you, which is they can beat you in any way, much like Kansas City, right? They can beat you close. They can beat you with defense. They can beat you with offense. They can light you up. They can run the ball. They can throw the ball. They really don't seem to have a lot of weakness. It's just a function of can they and will they get over the hill uh, this season? So uh, this is an easy one for me to pick, and I'm going with the Lions. All right. Uh, next game. And and there's a lot of division games this weekend real quick. So division games uh, may seem easy to pick, but then you also got division games are always funny because the teams know each other extremely well. They're rivals, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, this should be an easy one. I, I got Detroit winning without without too much difficulty. I got them winning going away. But at the, at the same time, man, some of these games end up a lot closer than you think, like Chicago and Minnesota last week. But uh, I got Detroit here. Um I want to say they're clearly the class of the NFC, man, but with the way the Eagles are playing right now, the Eagles are right there with them. But that that's a different thing, and uh, we'll get to that down the road because, barring injury, I think that um, I think that we can uh, hopefully expect to see that matchup in the playoffs, hopefully in the NFC Championship game with the conference on the line to go to the Super Bowl. All right, New York Giants, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys aren't playing well, but they got a much needed win at Washington last week. Surprisingly, I picked Washington to win that game. They need to be ashamed of themselves and letting the Cowboys win, but the giants are even worse. And, uh, so Dallas can get another win and feel good about themselves. Uh, they're, they're going to host this game as they do on Thanksgiving day. And the giants are just bad. 
I can't imagine they're going to go in there and win this football game. So I got Dallas, um, Miami and green Bay. Uh, this, this is a good one. I think this game will be competitive because Miami is, um, uh, I'm looking at Miami. They're playing a lot better since Tua came back and got back into the flow and they are fighting to see if they can't uh, sneak into the playoffs. The problem is uh, in the AFC, man, the race is so tough and that, you know, they really kind of got behind the eight ball when, when Tua was out with the concussions. Um, so for them to really get that, that final seed, which is likely what it would be if they got in would be very, very difficult. And here's the other problem. Uh, they're going to Lambeau field in late November. And we already know the book is out on tour. The book is out on Miami. They do not play well in the cold. Uh, Tua is a Hawaii guy, went to college at Alabama, spent his entire career at Miami. Now, you know, that might be a narrative, but the empirical evidence is there. This guy is terrible in cold weather, and I don't think he's ever won a game under 45 degrees, right? So, I mean, the, it is what it is. Now, the great Nelson Mandela once said, everything seems impossible until it is done. But until this is done, <laughs> I'm going to go with Green Bay in this one. Um but we might have a shootout here. Who knows? But here, here's the thing, right? What I don't understand about Mike McDaniel, he knows what the narrative is about his team lacking toughness because they got all that speed on the outside. He knows what the narrative is about his team being unable to play in the cold. But guess what? Here's the deal. Run the ball, stop the run. Mike McDaniels is a very talented designer of run game, right? He came from uh, San Francisco with um, uh, geez, uh, what's my, uh, Kyle Shanahan, who is an, also an outstanding designer of run game. But I believe when uh, when Mike McDaniel was in San Francisco, he was Kyle Shanahan's run game coordinator. So we know that he can really design up a, a run game. So I'm not sure why when the weather gets cold, you don't scale back that high-speed passing attack and really concentrate on dominating on the ground, get that going, and then maybe you could play a little bit more off the play action. That would be the smarter way to win, to win Excuse me, when the weather changes, especially when you have a quarterback that's not capable of playing under those conditions or playing at a high level under those conditions. So I, I really don't get it, but I guess, you know, you are who you are and you are what your record says you are. And so Green Bay here uh, wins on uh, Thanksgiving night. OK, uh, Black Friday game, another divisional matchup. This one will be tough, but. We got Kansas City and hosting um, the Las Vegas Raiders, and I got Kansas City here. They will continue to win. They still don't necessarily look like the Kansas City that we want to see, especially given the caliber of quarterback, the all-time, all-time great quarterback they have with uh, Pat Mahomes and, of course, uh, the all-time great offensive uh, play caller and play designer and Andy Reid. But – uh, Las Vegas, the Raiders don't have a quarterback at all. Their quarterback situation is terrible. They don't have much talent on uh, on offense, uh, pretty much relying uh, solely on Brock Bowers. And quick side note, I don't know why they don't get Michael Mayer the ball in, in, in the passing game more often, but you got what you got, right? But anyway, they don't have much, uh, much talent explosively on offense. They can't really run the ball. Uh, they don't they don't have much on defense. It's, it's just a bad team. Uh, who knows if Antonio Pierce is going to keep that job after this season's over. I feel like I say that every week. But Kansas City is going to beat them. But I will say Las Vegas is going to play them tough because that's what they're going to do. It's a divisional game, and they have their coach's mindset. I just don't think they have enough talent, and they don't have a good quarterback. So uh, Kansas City wins this one and goes on to what? I believe 11-1. and one. So, you know, there you go. Continuing their march towards attempting to get a three-peat. Uh, all right, the Sunday slate, Los Angeles Chargers at Atlanta Falcons. Uh, I think the Chargers are going to be pretty upset uh, coming off the loss to Baltimore. And the Chargers, again, very good defensive team, and they're going to concentrate on running the football. And they're going to have a quarterback advantage here, Justin Herbert uh, versus uh, Kirk Cousins. So uh, I'm going to go with uh, the Chargers here. I think they're going to win this game, again, especially coming off a loss. And uh, I think Jim Harbaugh is probably going to have um, – well, when they play Monday night. So whatever games or whatever practice they get in this week, I think it's going to be tough. And I think he's going to really try to play super smash mouth against the Falcons here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think he's going to try to play super smash mouth against the Falcons here. And I got the Chargers winning this one. All right. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. Uh, tough game. Another AFC North divisional tough matchup. But I'm going to go with Cincinnati here. I'm going to go with the upset. Uh, Pittsburgh. Obviously, they lost to Cleveland, um, what, last Thursday, I believe, last Thursday. And so I am going to go with Cincinnati here. Uh, Joe Burrow needs this. Joe Burrow's been playing lights out. He really has. 
but you know the the Bengals haven't been able to come away with the wins. I don't think they'll be able to make the playoffs this year. That is what it is. They're just too far out of range, out of range now. But what they can do is spoil it for division rivals. And um, yeah, I, I think that uh, Cincinnati beats Pittsburgh here, and I, it, it may end up being a relatively high scoring affair. But uh, even though Pittsburgh has that really good defense, but I think the key is if you can. Uh, Oh, sorry about that. I think if you can keep uh, TJ Watt from uh, really going off, you got a chance to beat these guys. And Cincinnati, if they're smart, <laughs> they will make sure their blocking schemes are, are are on point with that. And they will make sure they can identify where TJ Watt is on every single play because, you know, uh, being a great pass rusher that he is and not necessarily being a down D lineman, he's a guy that they can move around all over the place, whether it's on the D line, uh, you know, either end or whether they can use him as a uh, as a rush linebacker. You know, he's a guy that uh, really can get after the quarterback. So that's going to be the key, keeping uh, Joe Burrow up upright and, and standing and allowing him to utilize those weapons that he has. So I'm going to go with Cincinnati in the upset here. I, I am. I don't uh, – I think that they'll get that. And then Pittsburgh now will uh, – if they lose this game, they'll be tied with Baltimore. And so that would be very interesting to see how uh, the rest of the season goes there. All right, Arizona, Minnesota, I've been saying it week after week. I do not believe in the Cardinals. We just saw them lay a stinker uh, up in Seattle last week. And um, Minnesota is quietly, very quietly, 9-2 and two, and very quietly a very, very good football team. But, um, yeah, I don't uh, – Arizona is so difficult, and you just don't know when they're going to show up or when they're not. You just don't know. And I, I can't trust that, um, especially on the road. So I'm going to go with Minnesota here. I think this should be a not a blowout, but a comfortable win for the Vikings. All right. Indianapolis and New England Colts and <laughs> Colts and the uh, and the uh, Patriots. So I'm going to go New England here. Uh, one, they're going to New England. They got to play outside uh, in those in those elements in that cold. And um, obviously the Colts are a dome team and. I just I don't believe in Anthony Richardson. He got benched and then he had the one good game and people started thinking, well, maybe he, uh, you know, maybe he's taking his step forward. Yeah, no, he came right back to earth last week, had a terrible game. You know that uh, Gerard Mayo is going to coach up that defense. That's one thing New England does, even if they're bad offensively, uh, they're going to play good defense. And I think that um, I I'm kind of high on Drake May um, as, as the. As the season continues, um, I believe he'll just continue to get better. And uh, so I'm I'm going to go with uh, New England here. I think the Patriots win this game. Uh, all right, next, Seattle at New York. New York Jets, that is. Um, I got Seattle, man. The Jets, unfortunately, they – I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on with them. They just, they just fell off. Uh, the defense this year is nowhere near the defense that we've seen in the last few seasons – um, Aaron Rodgers is a shell of his former self. I don't, he, he believed that, I guess we all drank the Kool-Aid, right? Just thinking like, okay, we get Aaron Rodgers. And the thing I said was we don't need, you know, four-time MVP Aaron Rodgers that we be in the Jets. And I, I'm not a Jets fan, but I'm just saying, um, the, the Jets didn't need four-time MVP Aaron Rodgers. What the Jets needed was 60% of four-time MVP Aaron Rodgers to go along with the defense continuing to play the way they played. And, uh, you also need, uh, you know, Brees Hall to be doing his thing, but they don't seem to have any interest in making him an offensive focal point like they should be doing. They should be using him in something of a Saquon Barkley role, but uh, whatever, you know, uh, far brighter football minds than mine have decided that, that they're not going to do that, and that's not the case. Then they go out, they get Devontae Adams in the trade, thinking maybe bringing him over will, uh, uh, you know, kind of spark a resurgence in Aaron Rodgers. Yep, nope, sorry not going to be able to do it. It's not happening. Um, so you got that going on. So it basically it all sucks. Nothing is working out. You're hearing the rumors that uh, the Jets and Woody Johnson may not want Aaron Rodgers back next season, but you're still hearing him say that he wants to continue to play. I don't know what for. He's got all the money in the world. He's got a Super Bowl and he's got all the stats and he's a four time MVP man. Hang it up. You're not you're not you anymore. But anyway, I got Seattle winning this game for all of that. Uh, I think that they're um, I think they're better coached and I think they they have a solid defense. They know what they are. They're going to try to run the football and Geno Smith can make some plays. So I got the Seahawks winning this one. All right. Next up, Tennessee at Washington. This this is a 
this is an odd game because I think that with Washington, um, what's my man's name? Uh, Jaden Daniels has regressed some since the beginning of this season when he started off nuclear, uh, like at record setting pace in terms of uh, efficiency and uh, completion percentage uh, as a rookie. But Tennessee is a very weird team. They won last week despite turning the ball over three times and giving up, what, eight sacks on Will Levis. So uh, clearly, um, if you scheme it upright or if you have the players, uh, you can get after the quarterback against Tennessee. Okay, cool. So Washington should be – they should definitely be looking at that. Attacking Will Levis, they should be definitely looking at trying to, you know, force turnovers, which, I mean, obviously every defense wants to force turnovers. But you see that uh, Tennessee can give it to you uh, on a few times. Um, uh, they have the – they have the propensity to turn the ball over. Uh, Will Levis is not great in ball security, so you got that. Um, I think Jaden Daniels is better than him. But we saw Washington lose to the damn Cowboys last week. So we don't know what we're going to get from these guys. We don't know what we're going to get from these guys. Some people are going to say, well, that's just a division matchup, blah, blah, blah. It is, but the Cowboys are bad. That's not supposed to happen. But then you could say the same earlier in the year. Um, uh, was it the Browns beat the Ravens? The Browns also beat the Steelers. So these divisional matchups are always wonky, right? Um, but I am gonna go here despite my uh despite what I my my better intentions, I think I'm going to go with the commanders here. Not by a lot, not a lot of confidence here, but I just think Tennessee is bad. All right, next up, Houston at Jacksonville. Jacksonville, terrible football team. Houston, um, trying to maintain a grip on the division so they can be assured of that that um playoff uh positioning not playoff positioning but um entry into the playoff and i think uh houston comes here to jacksonville and i think they beat the jags jags just aren't good plain and simple so that's an easy one to pick i'm going houston here all right los angeles rams at new orleans saints <sighs> saints not quite as bad as we think um uh, Rams coming off, getting beat up, roughed up by the Eagles and the amazing Saquon Barkley. But um, I'm I'm going to lean Rams here. Uh, better better coach quarterback combination in uh, Sean McVay and Matt Stafford, even though I've never been a huge Stafford fan. Can't deny the fact that the guy is a champion and uh, he's got, you know, he, he's done a lot over the course of his career. Um, and uh, I think that better offense and better defense overall i'm gonna go with the rams here not by a lot not a lot of confidence so i'm gonna go rams all right tampa bay at carolina tampa bay is gonna stomp him we saw baker have his get right game against the giants last week <laughs> we saw him have some fun with uh what is it uh tommy cutlets tommy devito and his uh his italian thing right we saw baker have a lot of fun with that you can look it up um but yeah that was cool i'm, I'm gonna go with tampa here uh i think they just have a lot more talent i I don't think they're going to stomp them because Carolina has been playing competitively. And again, got that whole division thing going on, but they're, they're not going to be uh, Tampa Bay. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Bucks here. Next game, uh, this is a – man, I don't even – this is a big one, right? You got two of the best young quarterbacks in the league, um, Lamar Jackson, arguably the second best quarterback in the league. Lamar Jackson, uh, arguably uh, on pace for a third MVP and a second in a row. Um uh, and the Ravens against the Philadelphia Eagles. That one is going to be tough. The focus clearly will be stopping Saquon Barkley, right? And uh, we got a segment on him later on whether or not he is now the front runner for MVP. He is uh, He is playing lights out football right now. I, I believe he's on pace to break Eric Dickerson's, what is it, 40-year uh, uh, rushing record, single season rushing record in the M NFL. And um He's just he's just having a tremendous season. I believe he's got the third highest yards per carry average in, in NFL history, like six point two yards per carry. So you're going to have the, the two two uh, best and maybe most productive running backs in the league this year in uh, Derrick Henry on one side and Saquon Barkley on the other. Um, you're going to have two quarterbacks that not only are mobile, but can also throw the ball downfield in Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson. Man, this is a really good matchup. Um, Baltimore has had the worst pass defense in the league all year, but they've had a top two run defense in the league all year. So uh, clearly the thought is going to be to uh, attack Baltimore's back end in terms of uh, going through the air. But in the last few games, Baltimore has uh, they have been playing better in pass coverage. So we will see uh, what the Eagles are able to do against Baltimore. This is such a touch match, tough matchup, excuse me. 
Uh, the Eagles defense is playing extremely well. Saquon is playing extremely well. Jalen Hurts is now playing well. Uh, he's got those wide receivers on the outside. Man, this is such a tough matchup. Uh, man, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be a homer, but I think that um, Lamar Jackson is just – he's such a great regular season big game player. He's a tremendous regular season big game player. We have yet to see that level in the playoffs, and that's something different. But he's an incredible regular season big game player. So um, I am going to go with Baltimore here. They're also at home. Not saying they're invincible at home, but they obviously they're they're a good team at home at the bank. And um, yeah, I'm going to go with Baltimore here close. This is going to be a really good matchup. But I think that uh, if they can contain Saquon, which again, uh, you know, a top two run defense in the league all year, if they can contain Saquon, then they uh, have a legitimate chance of winning this game. And I think that they will be able to do that. So, and and again, if Todd Munkin can keep it simple, if Todd Munkin can keep it simple and not be out here going crazy and trying to get cute, the Ravens got a very good chance of winning this game. So I'm going to go Baltimore close. All right. Uh, San Francisco 49ers and uh, Buffalo Bills. San Francisco is just beat up. They are hurting badly. I'm going to go with Buffalo here. Josh Allen um, is another guy in the MVP race, quietly uh, playing some of the best football of his career. What's uh, Buffalo? Nine and two now. Uh, eight and two, nine and two. Uh, let's see real quick. Buffalo. It, there you go. Nine and two. And um, they are one of the best teams in the AFC very quietly. Nobody's talking about them. And I'm sure inside their locker room, they're playing that, you know, that disrespect card. But, eh, you know, it's OK. Um, but, yeah, I, I think Buffalo wins this one. This is just a tough, tough season for San Francisco. And that window, um, that Super Bowl window may be closing on them uh, in terms of guys getting older, guys getting injured. And, of course, you got to pay Brock Purdy. Uh, after this season. So you got a lot going on in, in terms of trying to figure out how you're going to do it. Um, obviously well coached, but the the manpower issues are just uh, killing them. So yeah, I'm going to go Buffalo here. Um, obviously prior to the season starting, this would have been a game that uh, people looked at and really, you know, probably would have circled, which is why it's in that uh, Sunday night slot on Peacock. But yeah, I'm going to go Buffalo here. I, I think they win and I don't think they have too much trouble. Again, not a blowout, but a solid win. And finally, the Monday night game, Cleveland Browns at uh, Denver Broncos. This is interesting because both have really good defenses. Um, with, what's his name? Bo Nix is really uh, playing some good, solid football, not turning the ball over a lot. Um, really not going downfield that much, but that's not the offense that Sean Payton is uh, running with him right now. Uh, Sean Payton and Bo Nix really clicking. Bo Nix is playing the kind of football uh, schematically the way Sean Payton wants it played. And uh, Denver is also, <coughs> excuse me, not one of the best running teams in the nation, but in the in the in the league. But they are making that concerted effort to consistently uh, run the football. So th this is a good football team. Uh, Cleveland is another one that is capable of winning these games, but you can't count on them to do it. I'm going to go Denver here. I'm going to go Denver. All right. So there you go. Uh, your week 13 pick them. That was uh, that was an easy one. That was quick. Week 13 pick'em is complete. Uh, I don't know if you guys wrote all those down, but those are those are what I got.